Okay, um, August 25th. Where has the time gone? Amen. August 25th. Wow. Anyway, Father, hear the prayer of your servant. Our text today is, uh, is in 1 Kings. 1 Kings 8. You know, the uh, lectionary has taken us to a lot of Old Testament scriptures lately, yeah. but that's fine. There's a lesson there. Mm -hmm. There's a lesson that we can learn. Yes. God's people go all the way back to the time of Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. and God was teaching them back then. Yes. Amen. And the Word of God has that history from back then mm -hmm. all the way through to the flood mm -hmm. and all the way through uh, up until the time of Jesus and there's lessons that we can learn because he's communicating with his people. Yeah. Let's turn to uh, 1 Kings 8 and uh, as you can see up on the screen there 22 through 30 and then we skip to verses 41 through 43. All right, uh, starting you reading in verse 22. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands uh, toward heaven and said, Lord, the God of Israel, mm -hmm. there is no God like you in heaven above or in earth below. Yes, and uh, you who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continually, continue wholeheartedly in your way, mm -hmm. you have kept your promise to your servant, David, my father, mm -hmm. with uh, your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it, mm -hmm. as it is today. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep you, keep for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, you shall never fail mm -hmm. to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. Mm -hmm. If only your descendants are careful in all they do mm -hmm. to walk before me right, uh, faithfully as you have done. Mm -hmm. And now, God of Israel, let your word mm -hmm. uh, that you promise your servant David, my father, come true. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. But will God really dwell on earth? Mm -hmm. The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. Yes. How much less uh, this temple I have built, yes. yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Uh, Lord my God, hear the cry of and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, that is the temple that Solomon built, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplications of your servant and your people Israel when they uh, pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Amen. And then jump me to verses 41 through 43. Mm -hmm. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for they will hear when they come and pray toward this temple. Mm -hmm. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Do whatever the uh, foreigner has asked of you so that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you mm -hmm. and do your own, as do your own people Israel, and may uh, know that this house I have built bears your name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, what a, uh, a powerful message this is, a yes, text. Lord. Help us to unpack it and help us to understand. Yes, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very interesting scripture mm -hmm. here. Solomon's, this is Solomon's dedication mm -hmm. prayer for the temple that he built for God. Yes. It's a prayer. And Solomon is sincerely praying from his heart yeah. to God about this temple. Yeah. Let's get 
a little background here. Mm -hmm. I want to go to 1 Kings um, 8. I'm sorry, 2 Samuel. That's where I want to go. 2 Samuel chapter 7. <clears throat> now, Solomon uh, had the responsibility of building this, this temple. Mm -hmm. David wanted to, but God said no. And uh, Solomon, your son, he said, will build this temple. Let's uh, look at 2 Samuel 7, starting in verse 8. Now then, uh, tell my servant David, and this is, uh, God is talking to uh, Nathan the prophet, mm -hmm. as you can see in verse 4. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, and so God talked to Nathan and said, give this message to David. Mm -hmm. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flocks, mm -hmm. and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. We know that story. Mm -hmm. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, mm -hmm. like the names of the greatest men on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Everybody knows about David yes. of the Bible, what he did. We even know about his sin that he committed. Mm -hmm. But we know about David. His name is great in the earth. Yeah. Verse 10, and I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that uh, they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning mm -hmm. and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. Yes. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. Yes, Lord. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Mm -hmm. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, that is when David dies, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you and uh, your flesh, your own flesh and blood, and will establish uh, his kingdom. Mm -hmm. He is the one who will build my house for my name, mm -hmm. and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Thank you. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Mm -hmm. uh, when he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, mm -hmm. flogging, with flogging inflicted by human hands. Mm -hmm. Now, Nathan is telling David, I will be with your son. Mm -hmm. He's going to build my house. I want him to obey me. But he says, when he does wrong, I'm going to punish him with a rod. Yeah. Wielded by men, but floggings inflicted by human hands. I'm going, to, I'm going to chastise him when he does do what I want him to do. Amen. Can you imagine that? God is telling David, uh, I'm going to work with your son. He's mm -hmm. got to obey me, but when he doesn't, I'm going to take care of him. Yes. I'm going to punish him. Yes. But my love will never be taken away from him as you, I took it away from Saul, whom I removed mm -hmm. from before you. Mm -hmm. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Mm -hmm. Your throne will be established forever. That's a promise to David. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Thank you, Lord. Now, look at um, 1 Kings 6. 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Solomon begins to build the temple. In the 480th year after the Israelites came out of Egypt, in the fourth fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. Yeah. The temple that Solomon, King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 wide, and 30 high. So then he goes into the yeah. exact measurements that he wants this temple built. Can you imagine that? God is talking to Solomon and say, build me this temple and these are all the measurements that I want. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this little human man, that this king, God is telling him what he, what he wants. 2 Chronicles 7. Second Chronicles seven eleven. When Sol Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, mm -hmm. and had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord mm -hmm. and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said. I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So Solomon started it, he finished the temple, and God was very pleased with this temple yes. that Solomon built. Thank you, Lord. It just boggles my mind how you could build something like that. Many, many, many employees carrying wood, mm -hmm. carrying metal, yeah. building this tremendous edifice mm -hmm. to the specifications that God had given. Mm -hmm. He did it. Mm -hmm. Solomon had the understanding, the wisdom, the knowledge to get that job done. Mm -hmm. So he did it and God was pleased with it. Yes. That brings us to our text for the day in 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings 8, verse, uh, well, 1 Kings 8, verses uh, 22 through 30. Let's take a look at that. 22. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, mm -hmm. spread his, out his hands toward heaven, mm -hmm. and said, Solomon stood before the whole congregation of Israel in a prayer of thankfulness and dedication yes. for the temple he was mm -hmm. able to build. Thank you, Lord. It was a bold prayer. Mm -hmm that Solomon gave, yet he was humble and submissive before God. He mm -hmm. went before the whole people. Some other scriptures here said that he was on a platform, a big platform. It was pretty large. And he spoke to all the people of Israel. And he held his hands mm -hmm. outstretched mm -hmm. with his hands pointed up, his arms outstretched. And he prayed a bold prayer prayer yes. to God to say thank you for giving me this opportunity mm -hmm. and now this temple is finished. Mm -hmm. David wanted to build a temple for God. Mm -hmm. David wanted to build a temple for God but why did he not build a temple? Because David was a bloody man. David was a man of war. And God says, no, mm -hmm. I'm going to have your son build this tremendous edifice for me. David was wealthy. Mm -hmm. And his son Solomon was maybe even more wealthy. So they both could have gotten the job done. Mm -hmm. But now Solomon comes before the assembly of God, all the Israelites, and thank God in a prayer of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Verses 23 and 24. And said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You Amen. who keep your covenant of love with your servants to continue, who continue, continue wholeheartedly in your way. Mm -hmm. You have kept your promise to my uh, your servant, David, my father, with your mouth you have promised it and with your hands you have fulfilled it mm -hmm. as it is today. As you can see today, it is completed. Now you can see that Solomon gives the, this prayer to God before the whole assembly of God. Mm -hmm. He is greatly moved. Mm -hmm. 
It was a day of fulfilled desires and prayers, a day in which God had manifested himself in the glory cloud, a day of bright hope for Israel and the house of David. When he extolled the greatness and uniqueness of God, it was with a full and overflowing heart. Solomon had his problems, but at that time, he was, he was spot on with God. Amen. And Solomon still knew full well that in the light of God's goodness, mankind still had the responsibility of responding to God's will. Mm -hmm. Notice in verses 25 and 26. Now, Lord, the God of Israel... He says, keep your servant David, my father, I'm sorry. Uh, now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep uh, for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. Mm -hmm. If only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me faithfully, as you have done, as you, David, has done. And now, God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. Mm -hmm. Solomon's confidence in praying to God was bolstered by previous answered prayers mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. Even today, our confidence in God is bolstered by answered prayers from God, right? Amen. When God answers our prayers, mm -hmm. our confidence in Him rises. Amen. And He knows that, you human beings down on earth. I know how to get your attention. You come before me, I answer your prayers. You know that I'm real. God's servants frequently claim his promises when they pray. Mm -hmm. And God honors those requests. Yes. We have a person in our congregation who does that. When they pray, they claim God's promises. Mm -hmm. That's a technique I heard a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at this. Exodus 32. Exodus 32, uh, 13 and 14. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel to whom you swore, yes. you swore by your own self. Mm -hmm. He says, I will make your descendants as numerous as as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land mm -hmm. I promised them, and it will and it will be their inheritance forever. Yes, Lord. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Yes. I don't know if you got that. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's a contract mm -hmm. or when God promises something, there's two sides to it. Mm -hmm. There's his side and there's your side. Mm -hmm. And when he makes a promise to you and you don't live up to your side of the promise, he doesn't have to do it. Amen. It's like a contract. It takes two sides. You do this? Okay, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. This says, remember your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and I will give your descendants all this land. Mm -hmm. I promise them and it will be their inheritance forever. 
This is what they pray. Then the Lord relented and did not bring his people the disaster he had threatened. Yes. He was going to clean them out. Amen. But they prayed the Lord's promise mm -hmm. that he had given them. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I changed my mind. I ain't going to wipe you all out. Thank you, Lord. They prayed God's promises back to him. Mm -hmm. And God said, okay, I will honor the promises I made to them. I said that Solomon was being very bold in this prayer of dedication to God. Mm -hmm. Yet notice how humble he was before God. Yes. The heavens cannot contain you, mm -hmm. yet... Will you dwell in this temple that I have built? Mm -hmm. That's what it says in our text mm -hmm. in verse 27. It says, but will God really dwell on earth? Mm -hmm. The heavens, even the highest heavens cannot contain you. Yes. How much less this temple that I have built? Yes. Yet, he says, Give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Uh, Lord, my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. Yes. That he acknowledges the greatness of God, mm -hmm. and yet he asks God to hear his prayer, mm -hmm. his plea yes. for continued mercy on his people. Yes. I think I read that in verse verse 28. This was a physical temple built by man's hands, mm -hmm. yet Solomon prayed that God would always keep his eyes turned toward this place, mm -hmm. the temple yes. of worship and praise. Mm -hmm. Physical temple God comes down from heaven to dwell in this physical temple. Amen. The heavens can't contain you, Amen. but yet you will be present with us mm -hmm. in this temple. Mm -hmm. Remember, God does not need the temple, but the temple needs God. Amen. God does not need Israel. Mm -hmm. But Israel needs God. Amen. Isn't it amazing that though the heavens cannot contain God, mm -hmm. yet he's willing to come down to live in the hearts of those mm -hmm. who love him. Mm -hmm. That the God of the universe takes us, takes up residence mm -hmm. in his people. Who, number one, continual wholeheartedly in his way. Mm -hmm. And number two, who, care, who are careful in all they do to walk before the faithfulness mm -hmm. as David had done. Yes. Verses 29 and 30. May your eyes be open toward this temple day and night. He prays, mm -hmm. this place of which you said, my name shall be there. Yes. So that you will hear the prayer, uh, your servant prays toward this place. Yes. Hear the supplications of your servant mm -hmm. and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Mm -hmm. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Thank you, Lord. When you hear, mm -hmm. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness and mercy goes together. Yes. When you hear us pray, mm -hmm. forgive us. Have mercy upon us in your house. My wife received an email uh, earlier in the week. And uh, actually, it was, a, it was an email from Arlene. Text. 
Okay, it was a text. I get those two things mixed up. They all both send a message. <laughs> text, text or email. What? It, she, she says it's a big difference. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It was a message. I received a message earlier in the week. It was a text, Marilyn, was it? Okay. Early in the week from Arlene. And Arlene asked if she would share the text with me, which she did. And among many things that she had mentioned in the text, she mentioned that our sister, Victoria's sister Rachel, had received some benefits. Thank you, Lord. Marilyn is sitting over here. She's still in my thunder. Remember before that song? I'm <laughs> She's still in my thunder. <laughs> God wanted it repeated twice. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she already said, well, you can share this with your husband if you would, please. Among other things, it mentioned that um, our sister, Victoria's sister, Rachel, had received SSI benefits, mm -hmm. which she had tried to get for many, many months or perhaps even years. And I want to know exactly what SSI benefits were. And they're supplementary security income. Mm -hmm. Financial help for people with disability. Mm -hmm. And that Rachel's son, Caleb, would receive payments as a caretaker Thank you, Lord. for his mom. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a tremendous blessing. Mm -hmm. You imagine? It's like night and day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like one day you're poor, the next day you're rich. <laughs> well, maybe not quite that dramatic. Victoria's family uh, had, had uh, some real difficult financial problems lately. Mm -hmm. We prayed about it, and I know Victoria has prayed and besought God about that situation mm -hmm. on many, 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 many occasions. Yes. Right? Yes. But you know, you pray and pray and sometimes it seems that God doesn't hear mm -hmm. your prayers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you put your trust in Him and you continue to pray, believing that He will answer your prayers yes. mm -hmm. as a Christian because He's promised mm -hmm. to supply your needs. Amen. And you say, I got these needs. Mm -hmm. And you pray. Pray. And as a Christian, you know that you're supposed to pray. And as I mentioned last week, you pray. I made the use the example last week. As I mentioned last week, you pray for that crazy cousin who's acting a fool and who won't clean up his act. He doesn't know God, yes. but you do, mm -hmm. and you pray, and God will answer your prayers on his behalf, Amen. and he don't even know it. And you know what he think? Oh, he's, <laughs> oh, you know, I, my ship is finally coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's taking all the credit, right? Mm -hmm. He's taking all the credit. I also mentioned last week that sometimes after you have prayed and prayed and prayed to God about a situation, that we have to be still mm -hmm. and wait on the Lord yes. mm -hmm. and know that I am God. Yes, thank you, Lord. 
And as Solomon is bringing out in our text today that God will keep his promises mm -hmm. to his people mm -hmm. if you will are faithful and you are obedient to him. God, God can't fail. Amen. If he promises it, mm -hmm. and you know that he's, he promises it, that's the thing. We're, we're you know, we, we're just not patient. Mm -hmm. And I know Victoria has, has prayed for this. And to me, to, to, to Pastor Al, I couldn't see any way out of that. Mm -hmm. I, I just could not see. I could see no way mm -hmm. out of that yes. situation. Mm -hmm. Rachel's situation with her legs swelling, mm -hmm. living in a car, mm -hmm. with just two incomes coming in, mm -hmm. Rachel's husband and Victoria's income, and for a long time, Victoria didn't have an income. Mm -hmm. Rachel not working, Caleb not working. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see a turnaround. Mm -hmm. I could not see it. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm aware. I've been thinking about this thing. I've been praying about it. Mm -hmm. But God, all of a sudden, gives Rachel her SSI mm -hmm. income. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then Caleb is going to be paid for doing what he's already been doing, taking care of his mom. Thank you, Lord. And they don't, you know, they don't get just a little bit. They get a pretty nice amount. Mm -hmm. So you got to continue to trust in God. Amen. And ask God to keep his promises. Yes. Believe that he yes. will mm -hmm. do for you, yes. mm -hmm. for you, what he promises mm -hmm. that he's going to do. He can't fail. God will not fail. Yes. Sometimes we can't see how, but he already knows how mm -hmm. he's going to answer us. Yes. Amen. He knows. He just is waiting for you. Just be obedient to him and trust him. Yes. Amen. And answered prayers boost our mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. in God. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's look at the last three verses of this text. We jump to verses 41 to 43. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name. For they will hear of the great name, of your great name, and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arms. When they come and pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Yes. Do Thank whatever you. the foreigner asks of you so mm -hmm. that all the people of the earth will know your name mm -hmm. and fear you mm -hmm. as do your own people Israel and may know that this house I have built bears your name. Yes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that's interesting. It's talking about, in our terms today, mm -hmm. spreading the gospel. Mm -hmm. I really hope none of you are down or disheartened because we are not spreading the gospel in a big way. As a small congregation, we're not spreading the gospel mm -hmm. in a big way. We are daily, by our examples, how we deal with people, letting our light shine mm -hmm. so that people know we are God's children. Yes, amen. 
when they see our examples, they will automatically know that we must be Christians. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how <clears throat> Marilyn can tell sometimes when she was working the, the people that must be Christians because of the, their examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an example to them. We don't have to preach, wave the Bible, or say hallelujah or praise the Lord after every other word. Mm -hmm. Some people feel that that's what you got to do for them to know that you're Christians, right? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord! Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know that? Hallelujah! <laughs> all of that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. Yeah. And those that the Father is calling or drawing may perhaps approach you when you show your light and your example, approach us and ask, where do you go to church? Where do you go where the, uh, the Lord has placed his name? That's what the Father wants. Everybody has got his role to play and his job to do. The big corporations Oh, I'm sorry, the big uh, churches, they have their role to play. We as small churches have our role to play. And here in these verses, verses 41 through 43, Solomon is saying, Father, those who don't know you, let them come to where your name is and where you are drawing them. And please hear hear their prayers, and answer them in your holy house, in that temple, and in the places where we meet, because this is our temple for God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, for your word. Yes, you have a place for all of us. Mm -hmm. You have a purpose for all of us, and you know what you're your will is. Mm -hmm. And Father, we just pray that we will live the life, the example that we want, that we will trust in you, that we will know you are God. Yes. We will be still. Yes. And allow you to do what you have promised that you would do for your people. Thank you, Lord. The cattle on a thousand hills of you are yours. Amen. And Father, it's for you to distribute it in, mm -hmm. in the way that you want. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. And we just look forward to doing your will, obeying you continually. Yes, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name.